well, you see the presentation. So uh, I will take the public health viewpoint and we'll try to talk more about uh, policy uh, options in this context. And uh, fortunately, uh, uh, the previous speakers said many things that I plan to say, so maybe I'll be able to make it shorter. Uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the problem. I'm just mentioning things that were explained in more details before. We have, in general, three categories of, uh, of uh, sources of, of pollution uh, when we talk about indoor air quality. The outdoor air, the, the indoor sources, and the HVAC systems, which we always think about as part of the solution, but sometimes they're also part of the problem uh, if they're not maintained properly. And another complication that was mentioned is that uh, the, the chemical and physical uh, richness of, of the pollutants and, and diversity is complicating the, the problem. Uh, there are no uh, easy, let's say, chemical solutions. And sometimes when you treat uh, something, you create another problem. So there's no easy chemical or physical solution. And now we'll move to... to, to strategies. So the first uh, and I think the most important strategy is reduction, reduction of sources. We have to remember that prevention is the best strategy. It's true in preventive uh, medicine and it's also true in indoor, uh, outdoor and indoor uh, air pollution. If we can uh, reduce the sources of pollution, it will be uh, the best and the easiest solution. And we often can do it. Uh, uh, sometimes the problem is lack of awareness. Uh, prevention is, is relevant for all of the sources, for ambient sources, for indoor sources, and also for, for sources from the HVAC, HVAC systems. Okay, so this is the first thing we have to think about, how to prevent the, the, the problem. Uh, and there are many ways to prevent, like uh, using different devices, uh, just pre preventing uh, uh, all kinds of, of, uh, of, uh, of, let's say, paints or, or things like that, uh, that emit uh, uh, pollutants from getting into our houses and so on, using the, the right materials, the right devices, uh, uh, omitting or reducing uh, practices that uh, emit indoor uh, combustion sources and so on. Now, the second strategy is ventilation. If you can't reduce or, or uh, prevent the pollution, you can ventilate it. So, so the big advantage of ventilation is that it handles all indoor pollutants, pollutants in one action. This is important to, to remember. There is no other uh, strategy that does this, okay? So uh, this is the advantage of ventilation and this is why ventilation is so important. You don't have to understand anything about chemistry or physics if you, if you ventilate, you simply uh, get what you have outside. On the other hand, sometimes you don't want to get what you have outside. So ventilation is, a bit tricky, okay? Sometimes it is simple because it's very clear that uh, the, the ambient air is of a higher quality and you can simply um, use windows or doors to ventilate your house quite efficiently uh, in certain occasions when, when you know that you have an indoor source. But sometimes on uh, uh, routine occasions, you are uh, living or you, you reside in, a, in, in an indoor environment where the ambient environment is problematic, for example, near a busy road, okay? So you still have to ventilate somehow, but it's much more complicated and you have to think and probably you have to do it smartly, either smartly as a person or using a smart system to, to, to ventilate smartly, meaning to... to to do the ventilation in times when uh, the indoor air is worse than the outdoor air. This is when you want to ventilate. And 
smartly also can also mean using devices that measures the indoor air quality inside and outside and maybe uh, 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 do the ventilation automatically. So this is, I think, one of the direction uh, that uh, uh, more complicated uh, devices are going to, and I think that it's a good direction. Now, the third strategy is air cleaners. Fortunately, Yael talked about uh, air cleaners uh, a lot, so I won't go into the advantages and disadvantages, but as you see, there's a question mark here. Um, filters are uh, much easier to recommend on, okay? They are passive, they, they are uh, mm -hmm. generally doing a good job, uh, certainly if they are efficient filters, uh, relatively safe uh, most of the times, and are recommended by uh, some health authorities around the world. Uh, other devices, again, as Yael explained, may be problematic. Sometimes you're trying to target your intervention to one pollutant, but then creating another pollutant like ozone or, or other pollutants. So, so filters should be examined carefully. Uh, another option is regulation, uh, but regulation really works much better for ambient air than indoor air, so it's very limited uh, worldwide. Uh, the problem is mainly of measuring and enforcement, especially in Israel, we know that we have an enforcement problem all over. Uh, and the regulation may be important uh, or is important in building standards, uh, mm -hmm. uh, ventilation standards, uh, building materials, furniture, uh, and for specific uh, pollutants like radon and asbestos, so, so um, sometimes also lead, lead. So regulation is an option, but it's not efficient for, for the entire problem. So what can we do? Well, we can educate. Education here, uh, I think that I'm the first one who's talking about education today. So I'm happy to talk about it because I think that this is one of the most important uh, policy actions that we, we, we don't really do. We have to increase the awareness, we have to develop and publish guidelines, and we have to create tools for people to reduce their, their uh, uh, indoor or to improve their indoor air quality. Some examples, uh, we can explain people, uh, when should they ventilate? Uh, how should they ventilate? how much, uh, what is an efficient ventilation, uh, what are the sources of indoor air pollution and how to reduce them, how to choose uh, better options, cleaner options, uh, how to maintain uh, and how important it is to maintain uh, air conditions, for example, and other HVAC systems and to prevent mold and dampness. And uh, education is also relevant for, for uh, planning and infrastructure and for the professional uh, uh, audience uh, who are dealing with devices, with HVAC systems, uh, uh, with uh, uh, smart ventilation and so on, and for, for uh, policymakers. Uh, the bottom line here is what I think is that indoor air is the, at the hands of the planners and the residents, not so much the regulator. Uh, so we have to get to planners, we have to get to, to the entire public and tell them about the problem of indoor air quality and how they can easily improve it or solve it. And these are just a few examples. This is the sum of uh, part of the EPA uh, website dealing with uh, healthy indoor air quality, uh, healthy indoor air quality in schools. There's a lot of uh, contents there. This is pre-COVID actually. Now there's a lot of COVID related uh, uh, materials uh, as well, but, but uh, there's also the general uh, indoor uh, stuff that is very uh, useful. They also created uh, a mobile app that uh, anyone can download to their uh, uh, mobile phone. And uh, this is uh, used to, uh, the, there are checklists and, and, and explanations about uh, school indoor air quality. Um, and this is designed for uh, school staff to work with. Uh, very nice, I must say that it fits the American audience. Uh, it, it is focused in, in more on American uh, exposures. Here the 
the situation is a bit different, the building materials, the climate and so on, but we can certainly uh, adapt it to, to the Israeli environment. Uh, and in conclusion, the first strategy is reduced sources. The second one is ventilation. The third one is education, education about reduction and ventilation. Then, of course, the, there is room for innovation regarding uh, air cleaners, uh, software, hardware, and so on. And there is some room for uh, regulation. Thank you.